Did she see me? Uh-huh. Is she coming over here? Yep. Peter. Hey. Hi. What are you doing here? Came here to murder you. <laughs> Welcome to the Black Irish Podcast. Welcome to an all-new episode of the Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brendan McCorkle, and Mike Crawford. What's cooking, good looking? What up, Brendo? How you doing today? And I'm good looking. I'm a little bit, not today. Really yeah, good, good looking every day, dude. Uh, I disagree today, but we can go on with it. Well, you're fa- <laughs> I mean, you're fairly decently groomed all the time, So you and your style doesn't really change from being like, when you really get dressed up, it's mainly just your clothes. Like, you always kind of look the same, so if you're good-looking in the morning, you're good-looking in the evening. Thank you, sir. You're, you're welcome, buddy. You yourself. Oh, well, we kind of got into it a little before we recorded, but uh, we got into, like, businesses and companies being complacent and just not putting forth extra effort to keep their business or anything like that. So, the most egregious one of all is Starbucks. I'm going to start calling them Star Sucks. Dude. You think they're egregious in in that as far as not doing more to keep their custom? Yes, because they are so, they know that you're coming to them now. So their effort has dramatically decreased. Like, not I think, I know, I have, I have examples here. So go to the local jam, local Starbucks to get the old lady some, some pick me up. And their straws are like liquor store straws. They're, Giant red non-labeled straws, and I'm like, okay, that's interesting, because usually you put your brand on everything, so that's interesting that you chose to skimp there, or you ran out of stuff. That means you don't have a good manager, okay? So then the second thing is, get little egg bites with the food, and they put it in an oatmeal container, and said, here, we don't, we ran out of containers. Okay, I could get, like, sometimes Starbucks will run out of a certain type of food, Or a certain type of coffee, perhaps. They can't make a certain type of thing because they didn't order the proper ingredients. Like, people ordered more than you would expect. Okay. When it comes to the packaging of the food or beverages you're giving, that should never change. If it's always on brand, it should always be on brand. Right? I agree, except for you got to depend on what you. But see, thing about it is that would be for other stores, not really for your store. You don't live anywhere near like the hood or anything like that, where it could just be a store thing. See, I would want to brand Starbucks overall, the company as a bad situation if it's just your store that runs out of shit. You get what I'm saying? There were multiple stores (laughs) with the straw situation. Oh, okay. Well, then Starbucks might just be changing. It might save them a couple of dollars, not to print Starbucks on the straw. Oh, I I know it does. But if you, it's one of those things where if you started with higher quality and then you lower the quality, like you should lose business because of that. If now if they started with the lower quality straws and then go, look, we're branding now, and now all of our straws have the cute little sleeves on them and they're all green. Oh, hey, way to go, Starbucks. Way to promote yourself. But it's like, we just know that you guys are coming here anyway, so we don't care about you anymore. Or it could be an overall survey thing and what people are complaining about the straws. And so to get better straws, that company doesn't do the branding part of it. Have you ever just taken the time to think about that? Yeah. Starbucks is worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't think they would start skimping on things. I would think they would try to improve things, being that the world's opening back up and their business is coming back. I think instead of just delivery business. They're not trying to skimp. Or maybe 
it could be that they skimped on it because they just lost a lot of money in a pandemic. They'll get you, they'll get your branding back. Listen, bro, over. I have been to a bunch of different Starbucks in my particular region. They are in no <laughs> danger of slowing down. They never have been. If anything, they ramped up because that was the only thing people could do is go out and get their coffee. You know, and then they go you right think? back home to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, when they, they were lose, mobile they ordering those and working that, But they lose those customers that sit there all day and just drink coffees and read the paper. Yeah, that's also true, or work and or study or do whatever they're gonna do. But I you know, just saying, it's it's not it's for lack of effort on Starbucks end. It's not for anything else. And maybe it's just that they're hiring poor managers, poor people, but usually Starbucks was one of those things where maybe the baristas weren't the sharpest tools in the shed, but at least the manager had their shit together, had their head on their shoulders because at Starbucks, it needs to be a well-oiled machine. People are coming in. They yes. want their shit instant. You need to have it managed well. So if Starbucks Definitely. is skipping on their managers, and that's why their straws suck, there's still lack of effort on Starbucks and going to Coffee Bean. <laughs> suck a butt, Starbucks. <laughs> coffee Bean? I don't know. Is that really a thing? No, not at all. But it oh. is an alternative <laughs> to Starbucks. And Coffee Bean actually did make a surge to where it's like, there are some people that are like, no, 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 I'm a Coffee Bean loyalist i'm like hey good for you you saw a goliath and you said fuck them i'm gonna do mine anyway and you kept pushing kept pushing didn't give up good for you coffee bean i am i, I understand that and i respect that because i'm that way with some stuff like that's how i ended up liking the red socks i'm not a diehard baseball fan that's more like an oh three oh two oh three somewhere around there 2000 baseball fan and the yankees were winning championships so i just decided to go against the big dog Yep. That's how I ended up with liking the uh, Giants. So I'm in a Dodgers household. I'm a Giants, San Francisco Giants fan. I live in L.A. I'm a San Francisco Giants fan. I wear my giant shit to Dodgers games because I'm not an asshole that's scared of all the other assholes. But it was like, you know, my dad's asking me when I'm a kid, when I'm a youngster, less than my older son, you know, like six years old. He's like, hey, wh who are your favorite teams? You like sports. Who are your favorite teams? And I was like, okay, well, he likes the Raiders. And the Dodgers. So I'm going to pick the Giants and the 49ers. At the time, it was, you know, Joe Montana, right before Steve Young, Jerry Rice, all that stuff. So early 90s, I'm like, I just picked an area and then went with the teams there for baseball, football. Winter sports, I stay at home. Basketball and hockey are Lakers and Kings with Clippers mixed in there. Lakers and Kings. I'm from Virginia, so we don't got no teams. I pick who the hell I want. Yeah. And I'm all over the place. Yes, you are. All over the place. All my teams are based on players. And then I just stuck with them. That's it. That's kind of what I did, too. That's how I ended up. I mean, like I said, with, with Montana and Rice and all those guys up in, in the Bay. And then we had Barry Bonds and Will Clark and all those guys over across the way. So, and then Barry Bonds. Yeah. I'm still, I'm a Barry Bonds loyalist till I die. You guys can all suck it. He's amazing. Well, Cowboys happen the same way as Red Sox. My whole family's Redskins fan, and I just don't. You just said that. nope mm -hmm. against the grain. I like mm -hmm. it. That's why we get along so well. And Michael Jordan made me a Bulls fan. Sorry, guys. Well, that Michael Jordan made a lot of people Bulls fans. <laughs> I just happen to still be a Bulls fan. Sorry, me. Well, no, Sucky me. That's just one of those things where you got to ride out. You know, that's that's somebody who's a true sports fan, though. Is you, even when your team sucks, you ride it out. Dude, the Giants were awful for years, and then they just went on a run, and then they and then went they down in the dust, uh -huh. and then. Look at them now. Now they're banging out homers better than anybody else. Yeah, but they better keep it up. Otherwise, they'll be picking number one again because their pitching is pretty much That's yeah, not, <laughs> yeah, not very good. I'm a realist when it comes to that. They're... So, Same thing about the Red Sox, though. Like, I don't understand how we're in first place with this team that we feel it every night. But, man, Bogey and Devers are, like, raking because the rest of this team that we put out there, and, I mean, JD's always going to rake. That's just what he does, but he doesn't play any defense. I don't even know who plays outfield. We had an all-star team outfield last year. All three of them made it. None of them are here anymore. They're all gone. Like, I woke up this season like, yo, who you got playing out here? Like, <laughs> what are these dudes doing, bro? It's crazy, man. Oh, and what'd you get for it, too? That's where you're like, man. A whole bunch of draft picks. I mean, they got the number four pick this year. They picked the shortstop that they said was should have went number one, so he fell to us because – People pick pictures, you know how that goes. 
So uh, they say he's supposed to be pretty good down the line, but we have Bogey. So, I mean, if he's good in six years, I think Bogey might still be around in six years, bro. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. With the way that baseball works is, you know, good chance he gets Bogey traded. Yep. Yeah, Bogey will get traded once we have a bad season because he's – The Red, his the Red Sox, tradable. I do have to say, the Red Sox, they got no problem cutting bait. They're like, this season sucks. It's over. <laughs> We got to restart for next year because we better be ready next year. I, I like yeah. I like that, but sometimes yeah, they do a little too we quick. Su- <laughs> yeah, I thought we were going to suck again this year. I don't believe. I really, I really, honestly, like, or was I'm really still mad about the fact they traded Mookie. I don't care about JBJ because he couldn't hit, but he was a hell of a defender. And um, what's your boy's name? I really liked your other boy. I'm not gonna lie, I liked him. Um, had the flowing hair, man. I can't think of his name. The flowing hair. trade the Kansas City. From the Dodgers? Uh, no, from the Red Sox. From the I Red told Sox. you our whole outfit. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't know. He was a lefty. Trying. He's a lefty. Um, I don't know who don't was know. on we, your team. I used to know traded. baseball a lot better than. But, yeah, I liked him. But I, I was know. really mad about the Mookie trade. But they just didn't want to pay him. But you can't really play a black man in Boston. That's not true. <laughs> You can. They just don't seem to do it. <laughs> no, they paid Paul Pierce. I'm going to take that back. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, just because you do one nice thing doesn't make up for all the other <laughs> shit that you're supposed to do just normally. <laughs> Man, uh, speaking of nice kidding. things, you know what's nice? Delivered pizza. You know what's sad? Delivered McDonald's. So... I'm going to be honest. I was reading this when you sent it, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, why? Why is McDonald's being delivered sad? Like, this is the new world. Doesn't it you feel sad, though? Like, no. To really? get anything delivered feels absolutely amazing, Brendan. Because you know what? I didn't have to leave my house. See, I, I just threw McDonald's under the bus because they're the low low end of the fast food chain to where. <laughs> low hanging fruit? Yeah, they're <laughs> the low hanging fruit. You know, they deserve it. You know, they put themselves out there like that. They absolutely deserve it. They're not the low hanging fruit. McDonald's is literally the number one fast food chain in the world. Right. That's why they're low hanging fruit because they're the most popular. It's not because it's oh, okay. easy to rag on them. It's because they're the most popular. More people will get that reference than if I said Carl's well, it Jr. It's easy to rag on them because they got a lot of bad food. They do. And poor people <laughs> that work there. <laughs> poor of character and poor of wallets, probably. <laughs> Just saying. Nothing wrong with working at McDonald's, but it's a starter job. Yeah. I want everyone to know he said that, not me. Yeah, I said it. It's it's a starter job or a rebound job. It's you don't ever want to be the manager at McDonald's. Never. Why not? They make like sixty grand. Some people that's a good amount of money. They can live off that. Like in Detroit, you can live a nice I'm life just saying, off 60 hey, grand. I'm not saying it's a bad gig. I'm saying that's not the mentality <laughs> to have when you go apply at McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? It's work, supposed oh, to be to temporary. <laughs> it's supposed to, to be temporary. Up from fry guy to manager? No, no. <laughs> Do not have that mentality. But the manager that are manager, McDonald's, I hope you came from somewhere else where you were like a manager and then went there to be the manager. I hope you didn't like, I hope you didn't like work your way up to, that's, that's a wild, that's a, no, nah, I agree. Okay. That's a wild position to have lived in. Because maybe people usually started McDonald's in like high school. If you stayed at McDonald's for that long, the amount they paid you until you became a manager, it's a rough, sounds like a rough deal. I'll I just kind of assumed <laughs> anybody that was a McDonald's manager was just anybody that applied that dropped out of high school. Like, you're <laughs> old enough. You're no, old no. enough. You just didn't have a job. Or if it's their second going, <laughs> if they're in their 40s, they're like, you're old enough. You definitely aren't going to do anything. We'll just make you manager now. Like that way you stay. Know. Is managers at McDonald's and listen to this because they do remember that Brendan said it on whatever, <laughs> bro. Like I said, nothing wrong with the gig. It's the mentality that gets you to the gig. <laughs> and yes, dude, it does feel like having fast food delivered is sad because it's fast food. Like you couldn't muster up enough energy to go out to the car to go into a drive through. Like even the dog is pissed off about this. Like this is ridiculous. No, you, I, I totally understand, man. It is absolutely sad. Pizza is Easter, a party. But pizza is a party. How about the benefit of not having to leave your house 
to get fast food. You can make fast food a party too. Everybody can yes. get a value meal. Yes. You get a value meal, you get a value meal, you get a value meal. Like I Oprah, get man. That. <laughs> I get that. It just seems like fast food delivery is sad, whereas pizza is fun. No, oh, and you give so many more job opportunities to have fast food delivery. That's just true. Think about that. Again, not knocking the hustle. Just it but having anything it delivered sad. can be looked at as sad because it's just all so lazy. Yeah. The only thing think that's about, think like about flowers the benefit and pizza. You're providing, think about the benefit you're providing the world when you order food. Don't think about the sad part, Brendan. The I, it's hard not to think about <laughs> the sad part. <laughs> think about it, Even though it might be a little sad, you just fed somebody tonight, man. Well, you didn't just feed your family. You fed another family. Well, how about this? They go to In-N-Out instead. <laughs> Good. You can order In-N-Out, In-N-Out is too, a man. McDonald's you can trust. They hire people at a higher wage. They actually have to have like a resume when they walk in. Higher quality, it's better quality. Just doesn't saying. matter. Order that off Uber apps too. Look, feed everybody because the people who work there are still gonna get eat from made in the food, and you can help feed another family by ordering Uber Eats, and that way they can feed their family by picking up and delivering your order tonight too. Don't listen to Brendan. It's not sad. Hey, feed the world. Keep the money for the world. Why don't you just order something besides McDonald's then? I don't know. There you go. I mean, if you get the right app, you can pretty much order anything you want. That's what I'm saying. If you're going to order food, just order something else. Don't (laughs) order fast food to be delivered. That's just, come on, man. If you're going to get fast food, go get it. It's fast food. It says it. Yeah. I mean, and if you're you're going eating fast food for money, then you're not really saving yourself no money by ordering it. So I'm with you on that. Exactly. Thank you very much for coming around. Well, if you're in Cali, I think you should order because the price of Uber is probably cheaper than gas. <laughs> no kidding, dude. I'm not, I need to start walking my kids to school. Be like, sorry, kids, we need to leave the house at three o'clock this morning. Get those leg Yo. your stretches, man. It's gonna be rough. <laughs> I saw like a I saw like a thing. Yeah, like gas is what like five bucks now. It's expensive, bro. It's expensive. <laughs> Well, dude, like even, so, I noticed something the other day. <laughs> so I noticed the other some the other day someone I was driving. So I bite my nails constantly, not constantly, okay. but I, I bite my nails a lot, especially when I'm driving because I'm like I, I'm not twitchy, but I definitely am always trying to be on the move. So when I'm driving, I have to be sat, and if it's for a significant amount of time, sometimes I have to do something. So I'll just start biting my nails. You know, it's just one of those things I got to do. I used to, I mean, I still bite my nails sometimes, but I try not to. I got like a whole nail kit. I, I don't think I've air. clipped my fingernails yeah. in probably 25 years. I think, I don't think I bit. I, I bite my, my nails. nails still. I still bite my nails, but I think I, I tried to really stop working on it since this corona shit. Like, I don't want to be out touching doors. and just stick my hand in my mouth. Like, I'm scared. Of, I'm still scared of COVID, bro. So, yeah, I try to clip them. I just realized the other day that, well, the other thing is, by the way, this is disgusting. I used to just like bite them and then just kind of flick them on the floor. (laughs) What else do you do with it? I just realized I could roll down the window and flick them outside. (laughs) In your car, yeah. (laughs) Yes, you can. I'm talking about in the house. I just flick them on the floor. I mean, I can't the floor. What? It's my floor, bro. You don't mind stepping on them? I usually don't step on them. I usually sweep it up when I'm done. Oh, okay. There you go. (laughs) See, but yeah, I usually, it would be like anytime I noticed there were like fingernail clippings on the floor mat, I'm like, oh, okay, I got to clean this out. It's gross. But yeah, I just recently realized that. My nails would definitely hurt if you step on one. I feel like a nail going into your foot. Like not like an actual nail. Like these things are made of steel, bro. (laughs) Freaking disgusting, man. So hard to cut a nail with a clipper, yo. So I... I also was like, I was driving and I saw somebody using a hand turn signal, which I haven't seen in a long time. You know, their brake lights were out. It was an older truck and they were using hand hand signals. You're looking like you don't know what that is. I'm looking like, why would they be using hand signals in their car? Because. Like, that's for bikes and stuff, bro. No, no, no. It's for your vehicle. Like, if your lights are out, it is perfectly oh. legal to have your arm out the window and you stick it straight up for a left turn, straight out for a right <laughs> turn, and you put it down for I'm stopping. A lot of so people don't know that. Be... And no, dude, how many 
kids do you think will never know that in their entire life what a hand turn signal is? Most. Right. And so then my question would be, where were you at when you saw them? Because nobody that lives in your neighborhood is that broke to not have, not have <laughs> white men come. Make it sound like I live in like the richest neighborhood ever. I live in a suburb in Northridge in Southern California. <laughs> Yo, you don't got to tell the world where you live. We don't need nobody running up in your crib, bro. Like, we kinda Northridge is a here. big city, bro. <laughs> but, it's fine. I've already said it before. With that being said... Nobody in your neighborhood. Those are like million dollar homes, bro. Nobody's driving around that without is not lights. True. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw it right up the street from my house. <laughs> really? Yes. That is surprising. That is definitely surprising. Like no turn signal lights, bro. Come on. There, you should have been living on the other side of LA. Like come on, where you belong. bro. That's <laughs> fucked up. That's not in my neighborhood. Everybody's welcome. Even the drug dealers up down the street. They keep it in house. We know what they're doing, but I've never seen anything outside of it. So hey, to each his own, man. You keep it away from me and my kids. What? I bet, they, good I bet their cars got lights. Listen, <laughs> what are you doing with no lights on your car? Dude, it, it happens. And if you don't have money, it can be expensive to fix if it's not something that's just the light. If it's some wiring or something. Come on. I mean, the moral of the story is people kids. should know how to do that. That way, they know what people are doing. Yes, but if you're black, you cannot afford to do that. No, so. no, no, no. <laughs> no. No, this is a white person maneuver only. <laughs> do not, not, not even Latino. Don't think that you're not black so you can get away with it. You're fucked too. Don't fucking try it. Don't try it. Absolutely do not try it. Or if you're a white guy with a wife beater, cards are off the table for you too. <laughs> And a lot of tattoos. Uh oh, buddy. Busted. We're just gonna <laughs> tow you straight to jail. <laughs> Your piece of shit car. <laughs> You're probably oh, driving it illegally. We're just gonna yeah. take it next door to the impound. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh the shit. shit you see in California. Bro, how long until we see so speaking of like people not knowing what even what hand signals are, the younger generation, how many younger people in the world are just never going to drive in their life what percentage it's going to be a significant percentage never even drive because they're going to uber or they're going to well, work from home who don't drive now i know but i'm saying the the percentage is going to go up go drastically up. Yeah. in the next decade yeah, because there's going to be people who literally you can do everything you need to do from home you can literally zoom so you can see people talk to people phone all that shit. And if you need to go see someone, you can Uber. And you're, yeah, mm-hmm. you're going to go out to meet up with some friends or something. You're probably going to need a wasted. ride anyway. <laughs> Take your Ubers. Good, good. Get your Uber and get trash. That's what I'm saying, That's man. Or once it gets to a point where it's going to get to a point, though, where certain children get to an age and they're like, man, I'm 20. I've never learned how to drive. Now I need to learn how to drive. And then they're going to be like, oh, shit, what do I do? And it's going to be way harder for them to learn as an older person. It just seems like things come easier to learn when you're younger. So, Do you ever think we're going to get full Jetsons? uh, I think there will be a version of the world that will have that. I think it'll... I think there will always be land, air, and sea. I think that it'll more convert to air uh, in the future. Torn. However, I do think that there will always be. I know you're not going underwater. <laughs> By the way, that's going to be the next thing that somebody does if they haven't done it already is build build an underwater city instead of going to Mars. They're just going to be like, who wants to live in the bubble under the sea with fucking? Yo, Sebastian. you can't live in Look a bubble the under the sea. Yes, you can. There are sharks and wells. Not if you have a sure. bubble, a very strong bubble, not made out of like soap and. Cornstarch or whatever's in there, not cornstarch. I don't care what is made. A shark the other day I was watching shark. That thing was two hundred pounds, bro. Dude, if you have a self-contained snow globe that has the the walls are thick with whatever you have, you could even have a little nipple out to the outside world where you pump oxygen, fresh oxygen in, and pump carbon monoxide out. It has to be huge, otherwise they could just swallow it whole, probably. Well, like, these you have are to, big animals, bro. Okay, but how big? If you have a city, 
You think a city can be swallowed by a shark? That's what I'm saying. It's going to be an underground city. It's going to be like miles wide by miles. It's, it'll be huge. They're going to do an underwater city and invade that area of the world for sure. I don't know who they is, but probably Elon, somebody along those lines. But they have fun with that because anywhere that it ain't my natural habitat, which is land, I really don't want to be. I really don't like air. I fly because I have to. And if I had a flying car, I would probably be scared of that. I ain't doing nothing in the sea. I don't scuba, snorkel. I don't even swim in salt water. I don't even want to waddle my feet in it. Nope. Keep it away from me. Don't want no parts. Sorry. My oh, man, my homeboys want to do some like sea dudes and. Yeah. yeah, right. You gonna I see you could take you out to the part of the water where you will never come back. You that know is that, true. Right? You have to be careful with that <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, like, like you go out there and you see a fin, you accidentally bump a fin, and you know it's on the other end of that fin. Something that's gonna eat you alive. You ain't coming back. You ain't seeing nobody else ever again. You out of here. Like sharks and whales are so big that if they swallow you, they don't even have to chew you. They can swallow you. You're gone. You're out of here, buddy. And if a shark with those teeth, sorry, but yep, not, not my playground. Yeah, okay. you can have that world. Don't want no parts of it. So you, Air what would it, what would, would it, nice to me. what would it take for you to go skydiving? And there's nothing you could. There's not money. You could. T- you could give. You could offer me a hundred million dollars. I wouldn't do it. You fucking million. liar. No, sorry for that, but no. Hundred mil. Stupid, bro. They could put a hundred grand in a briefcase and cash in the plane, and you'd be like, I think I'm getting on. A hundred million dollars. You can't. What are you gonna do with it when you go splat? You're what not gonna go splat. Million? You get a parachute. Yeah. Can you? Can you guarantee me that? No, but you get the same guarantee. Listen, you get the no. same guarantee as everybody else in the world that goes skydiving. It's probably going to be fine. Hey, well, guess what? I'm not willing to take that risk. Not for 100. Quote me. Somebody could bring, pull up with 100 million in three suitcases. I won't get on the plane, my guy. I don't care how big they are. I ain't getting on the plane to even think about skydiving. Are you smoking? What if you had a really tight will in place? Then, just in case you do go splat, that money still goes to all your loved ones. So you think I'm willing to go splat so my loved ones can have money? Okay, well then, here's the alternative. I, I you don't go. Here's the alternative. The more, <laughs> the more likely <laughs> alternative is that you don't go splat, and then you got 100 mil. Actually, closer to like 46 after the government swipes it. If they bring it in suitcase, the government gonna go. They better find me. They better find me in Barbados, motherfucker. (laughs) If it's in cash, I don't know if you're gonna get 46, buddy. It's gonna be tough. It'll be tough to give them that 46 in cash. But uh, no. Ah. Look, Brenda, let me tell you, man. All right, so what about. The one thing about me that everyone knows, I enjoy life. I want to be I know here you as do. long as I possibly can. I want to live as What about rock climbing? Myself. Are you against rock climbing? Depending on what time of rocks are. Like we're in like a, a situation, like a like a jamboree, like we're mm-hmm. somewhere safe. <laughs> but you talk about like outside, like climbing like the side of a mountain. No, I'm saying you're well, maybe, but you're still tethered. Like if you fall, it's gonna be scary as shit, but you won't die. You'll get caught as long as your harness and everything functions properly. <laughs> see, see that, that sounds a little too depends on how high we're going. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Uh, I don't know. I was just kind of curious. You're just saying you're so <laughs> against anything in the air. I want to say, I'm so I'm shocked about the hundred million dollars for the uh skydiving yeah. thing. I'm shocked. Hundred million, bro. Like it's no amount of money you can pay me to risk my life. You want to know the difference between the you money. and me? You would what? not jump out of an airplane for a hundred million dollars cash, and I paid somebody else so I could do it. Idiot. And, and even if someone offered you a hundred million, you have an entire situation to leave that money to the wife, to kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so, it's just me. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not afraid of the air. My mom would end up with a hundred million. You know what I'm saying? Like, nieces, nephews, family. You know what I'm saying? People I love, but yeah, I'm good. Hey, I'm that's good. fair. I think they prefer to have me here. I'm, 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 I'm going to assume that. Mike, you are worth way more than $100 million. However. That's what I love to hear, Brenda. I didn't know that you <laughs> thought so. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, well, some days I think I'm only worth 50 bucks. I know. Day. that. Trust me, man. But, I have those days, too. I'm like, I'm not but, worth the gum I'm to, chewing. Oh, basically, shit. <laughs> but today, I'm going to go with no. All right. So I have a situation that propped up. And I'm going to tell you how I handled it. And you tell me how you would have handled it. So I went out to walk Rocco, our dog, who is... Pitbull, Dalmatian, Terrier mix, we rescued him, hates other dogs, great with people, hates other dogs. Used to be a bait dog for fights, does not, Chihuahua comes around, get out of here. So, I go across the street, take him for a walk, there's a lady walking, a nice big dog, that stops across the street, in front of our driveway, to give her dog cookie. I'm like, okay, whatever, that's fine, I'll just take Rocco for a little extra extended walk, wait till she walks away, then I can go home. Turns out, I don't know if this lady was training this dog or having a conversation with this dog, but I walked around the block and five minutes later, she's in my driveway still giving the dog fucking treats. So I'm like, (laughs) all right. And mind you, this lady is wearing a giant sun visor, a fanny pack, mid-high thigh shorts, (laughs) You know, not exactly ankle socks with her orthopedic tennis shoes. You you picture her however you want. So I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to do? Because this, ultimately what I did was I just kept walking Rocco until she eventually meandered down the road and I was able to walk him across the street. Because I'm like, hey, I'm walking my dog. What's the worst going to happen? He gets to walk more? Who cares? I wasn't late for anything. Or, or why you shouldn't be nice to someone who's in your driveway? How about you should have told her, hey, I'm trying to take my dog in the house, and if you don't want your dog to get eaten, I suggest you move it on up the block. That's why I paid for this home. Because she didn't <laughs> know it was my house. That's why I'm going to tell her. <laughs> I'd be happy to let her know. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't, bo- I know, I, it didn't bother it me. Did, but it, it wouldn't bother me to do the first lap, but what are you doing at my house just giving your dog treat for two laps? No, no, no. But here's the thing. So I think she was training the dog because then when she walked down, or she just gives this dog fucking cookies way too much. <laughs> but it was like, she stopped again at the end of the block and was like going in the fanny pack and giving the dog cookies. So I'm like, all right, maybe this broad just, that's her husband i don't know they're going out on a date i don't know what's happening right now but she's taking a lot of t- extra time with this dog for their quote-unquote walk they're doing a lot of sitting and talking which just it was weird for me but i was curious how <laughs> if you'd be like yeah you just keep walking or you're like nah i'm coming home if you don't want this dog to go crazy get the fuck out of my way <laughs> no yeah the first time i would have spent the block but i'm not spending it twice to go in my own house yeah no nope, not even Excuse me, ma'am. My dog don't like dogs, so I need to go up that driveway, and you are in the way. Could you please move? Thank you. And if she said no, I'd call the cops. Oh, if it no. See, had I <laughs> had I done that, because in my mind I was like, all right, I'm gonna go take him for a stretch. Like she has obviously seen me and kind of knows like my dog's looking at her dog, whatever. So I'm gonna instead of going around the block, I took. Rocco up the street and then cross the street to where it was on my side of the street and I was going to walk back like to kind of force the issue like hey we're coming up this way it's time for you to move along and then you know they eventually did so it wasn't an issue but if we were to get close and they were still there all I have to do is kind of let go of Rocco for a second and catch him (laughs) that'll get anybody out of the way (laughs) don't worry because he's going to start coming and he's going to be barking and then no you know you need to go oh so, <laughs> speaking of uh, animals under attack, uh, my son and I, my three-year-old, my recent three-year-old and I, uh, we officially started murdering together. So, that's fun. I hope it wasn't people. No, no, not people. <laughs> so, uh, the other day we were, I forget what we were doing, but we were out, got dirty. Oh, we were at uh, a friend's house, aunt's house for swim time, pool, whatever. So, we get home. I got to get the kids bathed and get them, you know, in bed, all that stuff. So we go to get Connor in a bath, walk in, and there's, like, legit ten flies, like, like, all above the bathtub. And I couldn't help it. I was just like, what the fuck? So then, cue up the repeater. My three-year-old, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, no, how do I undo this before mom gets home? I was like, what the flies is going? Where are the flies? What's the flies? So by the end, we got to, what the flies? So that was good. But we ended up murdering all these things together. 
because flies are pretty resilient. So I, you know, and again, I'm hitting one, and a bunch of them are going scattering around. But I had the lights off, so they're going to the window. So they all kind of stayed within the bathtub area. Or I'm trying to smack them out of the air because there's so many. I'm like, I'm bound to hit one of them with a good whack. So any of them that I hit and didn't kill, Connor picked up his little dog monster truck that he plays with in the bath and ran them over (laughs) just to make sure they were dead. (laughs) So we ended up, uh, we went on a slight murder spree. I think we got 10 or 11 in total. Oh, That's man, great. that had to be so cute, bro. That it was awesome because at first I was like, ah, don't touch it. But then I saw what he had, and I was like, oh, we could just wash that. Yeah, kill him, buddy. Get, I'll try and knock them all in the same area. You just run them all over, bud. Run them all over. And he legit, yeah. he, he got a few uh, stragglers that were wounded soldiers. He's like, no, 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 not today, <laughs> bro. You're yeah, done. You don't, you don't get to live this fight, bro. Go to somebody else's house next time. And speaking of repeaters, I also just remembered. So the other day I forgot what we were doing, but we're going on a family vacation on Tuesday. So I went like, so next Tuesday, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, all right, Connor, we're putting him to bed. I was like, see you next Tuesday. <laughs> like not thinking of it. And then he's like, see you next Tuesday. And Dallas is like, um, he cannot say that. You can't say that around him. I'm like, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> we're out in public. And he's like, see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, he gonna see him next Tuesday. Gonna see him before that too, but I'll see you next Tuesday also. Yeah, he does. He has a he has an attitude on him when he says stuff, so people might take it the wrong way. <laughs> I just got his for sure. Like now, for sure, I gotta watch what I say around him because he is like instant repeater. But oh. speaking of repeaters. I officially went back to Puma, Mike. I'm a Puma guy. Nothing, but you were making fun of me a while ago for being a Puma guy back in the day. Now I'm back to Puma. (sighs) Officially back to Puma. I had to go get some new shoes, and I was like, you know what? These are reasonably reasonably priced. They feel good. They feel good on my feet. I got my little insert, my little shoe mattresses. They look. I saw a pair of Pumas in, somewhere on the online. I wanted to go get the. Other. That's what I got. The soft gel Pumas. <laughs> so I got those, and then I got another pair that kind of look like uh, skater shoes. So like out, like out and about shoes, just casual wear. Uh-huh. So Pumas back, maybe baby. I can, maybe I can give me some other little shoes with the wheels on, something like rollerblade everywhere. Heelys. You would not be a Heely guy. Why not? That shit is cool. That it goes too fast for you. You're a slow and steady <laughs> type of guy. You're just a you're an I'll get there when I get there guy. I'm the guy Damn that needs man. Heelys. I'm the guy that's like, how do I get there faster? Oh, you're right about that. Except for when I'm driving, I drive like a bat out of hell. I need to work on that. Well, it's just also because you drove for a living, so it's like you have the quicker you do it, the more quicker you can more get money. paid. Yeah. yeah. So it, that makes sense. I just I always drive like that just because I've commuted for like. My entire life. So since I basically since I started working, even if I was a passenger, I was still commuting. But then driving, once I start stop passengering and driving, like dude, my commute is anywhere from an hour and fifteen to two and a half hours a day. I am zipping through. So when there is opening, <laughs> I'm like, I'm going I'm ninety, gone. bro. I'm out of here. <laughs> Fuck this. I usually go twelve. <laughs> I feel you, man. You got kids, so you only got to drive slow. So when you get a chance, I understand it. Let your hair flow. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So I got some new kicks. Speaking of new kicks, I practice karate these days like I did when I was a kid. Do you ever practice karate? You still got to send me sizes, bro. No, 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 no. (laughs) I'm never sending you sizes of my children's feet so you can buy them Crocs. Never. Don't worry. I'll be back to your house sooner than you. Well, then that'll be your motivation. You can buy my son's <laughs> shoes that'll light on fire as soon as you leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put nails in them when they're Crocs, sleeping, Crocs, and they'll be Crocs, like, oh, Crocs, these are the most <laughs> uncomfortable shoes ever. They hurt. I'll be like, that's right. They hurt. Remember Once that. Once I give them to them and they put them on, they're never going to want to take them off. No. I'm going to do like the Viet Cong used to do. I'll put like little traps and like razors and stuff at the front of the <laughs> shoes and they'll be like oh crocs ruined my feet yep don't insert into crocs <laughs> <laughs> croc hater on line one croc hater for sure 
You, which is funny to me because you I do have, right now. You have some decent style outside of Crocs and sweatpants. Why are Crocs not stylish? Because have you seen them? Visually, they are not appealing to the eye. Well, see, I don't do the whole thing because, see, they have, like, little things that you put in there making a pill into the eye. They're, like, little crock hole fillers. I'm just not that guy. You know what I'm saying? So, so even crock doing. realizes there's a flaw in the design visually, and they go, we got to cover up these holes. They look like crap. So it's like little gimmicks. It's like, you know, like charm for a bracelet. It's like charm for the crop, and they go inside the hole. So you can be the one that says, like, number one dad. Bedazzling your, your Crocs. logo. Yeah, there you go. Fuck that, dude. If you have to bedazzle anything, you shouldn't be wearing it. I don't bedazzle. Mine is straight black, baby. I ain't bedazzling. I, ain't I will say, Mike, it's thing. official. You finally found something that's black that I hate. <laughs> hey, don't worry. They got these in all colors, even white, bro. <laughs> uh, guess what? You found something white I hate. <laughs> bring me the bring me the leopard. I hate those animals too. I hate it all. <laughs> I can hate that version of whatever it is. And Crocs, yeah. I will never be on board with. That's the hill I'll die on, for sure. I got no problem with that. Don't worry. As soon as you get a pair on your feet, you will not hate them. There's no way you can be a grown person who have walks and like we do, like as grown people, and, and understand foot pain and not like a pair of Crocs when you put your foot in. It's See, just but not, here's it the doesn't thing. add here's, up. Here's the thing. It's like the, it's like the Michael Jackson thing. Like, I can still listen to his music because I never watched the documentaries. I never read anything. Like, like... I'm just yeah, putting the I wool over I my eyes on purpose. So yeah, I, I refuse to watch it. Yeah. I'm the same way. So same thing with Crocs is I just choose to not know what that feels like so I don't have to have the burden on my soul. I know. But one day I'm just going to slide your foot into some, and when you wake up, you're going to step down into it and you're going to not even notice that you have them on. You're going to be like, oh, I had these on all day? Oh, That's going to be goodness. the same day that I project a dinosaur hologram in your room. <laughs> this is a hologram, so I'm cool with that. Man. <laughs> At least you're not trying to make me believe it's real. <laughs> I have a question for you. Speaking of fashion, how often do you wash your clothes after you wear them? Uh, depends. What do you mean? So I can wear jeans a couple of times before I wash them, but underclothes, I wash them every time. No, underclothes is every time. Shirts, I would say, like a t shirt, like I'm wearing a shirt, this gets. Off into the hamper every time. But yeah. jeans, I mean, unless they're dirty, three to six no. times. Each. <laughs> yeah, like, I can wear those until they actually, like, no no joke, like, they until have to Until something actually, gets like, on them. Look dirty, yeah. yeah. They have to look dirty. I mean, what am I washing them for if they don't look dirty? Because they're just jeans. And that's usually the thing, too, is when I'm wearing jeans, like, I don't usually wear them to go get scuffed up. Like, I'm wearing them out to look halfway decent. Where I'm not going to be rambunctious at all to where they wouldn't get damaged unless my fat face can't keep whatever I'm shoving into it and it falls on my jeans. <laughs> but other than that, it's like I don't do activities that would get my pants dirty when I'm wearing pants jeans. Dirty. Yeah, I'm old now. I'm, I'm a grown man. I really go to work and go home like I ain't trying to. Um, t-shirts, like you said, anything t-shirt, cotton, not wash every time. But any of my other shirts, I barely even wash shirts anymore because of how expensive shit is. I'm a dry cleaner dude. Like black shirts, I don't want to put in the wash because I pay too much for shirts. I'm paying like $45, $50 for shirts. Ooh. I'm putting them in a dry cleaner because I don't I want to get at least five wears out of me for no more good. Damn, bro. Like, I, so. I'm just give me a give me a fruit of the looms or Hanes. I mean, I will say I did get like one. But I don't shop very like I'm not I'm not a like I'm not a because I'm not a, like a dressy dressy dude shit. I don't shop often, but the clothes I wear, I'm not gonna lie, just on Yeah, they're nice. Some you get ignorant fashion stuff like I mean yeah, I pay a little bit of penny for the clothes just because of quality clothes, but I'm yeah, no, enough. I'm, I'm gonna wear to go. I'm all for in the it, last year yeah. I literally been in sweatpants. <laughs> I bet they're nice and comfy. They are nice and comfy. <laughs> you know the best thing about sweatpants that you always don't have to wear underwear, man. <laughs> Sometimes just roll with the punches. Oh, dude, my eight-year-old is 
is a commando machine. He is not a fan commando. of underwear. Shout out to my man, <laughs> Con, Con with the commando status. No, Mickey, the older one. Oh, oh I thought you said the three year old. The older one, the eight year old. He's like, shout he out does, to the man, Mick. He does not shout like Tony's. He just wants his dick about, to man. hang. I'm like, whatever, bro. <laughs> it's <laughs> yours, bro. Do your thing, buddy. Do you, buddy. As long as your pants don't fall down, then go for it. <laughs> You're good. Hey, do you eat, have you ever had or do you eat glass noodles? What is that? Okay. So, like, uh, Asian food, they usually have glass noodles. They're like the see-through noodles. They're kind of crunchy. All right. Nope, never had that. Is it good? Yeah, they're good. I was just curious because I had a conversation where I thought you may have tried them before, and my wife was like, "Mike has not tried that." Cause you know that's my you know that's my. I, mean, well, I just know, figured what you know, being out and about, going no offense, on dates, you know, whatever you know, like pow, maybe, pow. maybe you would have had a glass noodle in your day, but yeah, that mainly homie, gets man. me to we were at so we went out to a Korean barbecue. Which we okay. haven't been to in a long time. It's awesome. Have you ever been? No, because the last time we went, we went to a regular barbecue to Oh My Going Off, and it was trash. Yes. <laughs> they are a sponsor of my son's Little League, so I will not trash them <laughs> on here. But, yeah, like even at the fundraisers, we don't – that's the one fundraiser we don't do is we don't go to that place. I'm like, can I just give you 30 bucks and you just don't poison me and can we call it fair? Like, even their yeah. French fries suck. Yeah, their everything French their fries sucked. sucked. Yeah, everything about that place sucked. And the, and the crazy thing is now they sponsor Mickey's team. <laughs> no, they're not a sponsor of his team. There's, they're, they oh. help with the Little League. Like, if you oh, okay. if you okay. purchase a meal, then five bucks goes to the Little League or whatever. They do, oh, okay. they do like, okay. a that thing. Uh, so you support okay. them, and they support the Little League on certain days and times. But I'm like, <laughs> Doesn't I that can't. Doesn't that you can't support them? <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll give you my time. Little League. I'll help with the fields. I'll do all that stuff. I am not going to that barbecue joint. Yo, that was the, and I love me some barbecue. I know. That place is the, It was the worst. And, hey, they'll be unforgettable, though. Like, we'll never forget them. Yes, we will never forget to not go there. And the worst part is, it is literally right next door to a sushi place and Outback. And Outback. So you're like, come yeah. on, man. We could have had any how other they, thing. How are they even still in business? Supporting the Little League. <laughs> <laughs> it's just only the people from the Little League eat there. <laughs> no, that would make a lot of sense, bro. Because next door to Outback and the uh, and the sushi place, like, they shouldn't make any money. Because that, like, no... All jokes aside, that was really bad barbecue. Honestly, I think they get the carryover from Outback. When Outback has too long a wait, <laughs> they go, fuck it, let's go to the barbecue first. Right, and then they have it once and never again. They are just single serving customers all day, bro. They do not have repeat business. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they changed the cooks up. Maybe they got better cooks now. It's been I don't long. care. I don't care. They fucking lost it, man. They do not get another shot. If you mess up that egregiously once, yeah, like it yeah, doesn't matter can. if they got a new cook. Like fries are fries. You fry them for a certain amount of time and then you take them out and salt them. If you don't do that, then I definitely don't trust you smoking meats. Yeah, so we we didn't say any names, but I apologize for anybody who listens to this who knows who sponsors your little league because they know who we're talking about. But outside of that, none of you will ever know who we're talking about because I don't want to mess up anybody's business to that level. But with that being said, they were pretty bad. It was garbage. On the other hand, that Korean barbecue that we had was amazing. It was really, really good. I've never had Korean barbecue, man. So next time I come out, you're going to have to find one. We can go. We can do that. So the Korean barbecue is awesome. So it's like, you know, we get there. you ha Everything is, you know, scan the menu for or the QR code for the menu. Like, people don't hand out menus anymore. That's just not a thing. Yeah, no. So that's all good. But no so, menus. you know, it asks you to get on the guest Wi-Fi. You know, you can put in anybody's email. You can make up an email. It doesn't, like, mm -hmm. send you one for a confirmation. You don't have to put in your actual email for that. So get Thanks on the Wi-Fi. Because some people are foolish. No, I think uh, at Korean Barbecue, it was uh, fartknocker at yahoo.com. That's, that's who was <laughs> using the guest Wi-Fi. 
my last one was Back with Flip 2. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there you go. I don't know, man. And that's a lot. I should just did ABC3 because I saved myself the time. Like, bro. Do you give fake names when you ever order food? Absolutely. Every time. <laughs> yeah. We've been over this, of course. But then sometimes I forget the fake name and I'm like, damn it, my order's been there for five minutes and I forgot. Oh, see, I stick with the same fake name. I don't switch, <laughs> which is probably why people will probably pick up on it because my fake name is Chris. I don't know why I think Chris is simpler than Mike. I don't know, but I just go with Chris. It's my fake name every time I order something. <laughs> That's not a bad one. Chris, it's pretty common. If you get, see, but then, see, but you, don't go, you don't go coffee. Because if you go coffee, you get people that are like, how do you spell it? I don't know. Phonetically, you're going to be the one reading it, you <laughs> fucking moron. God, you think I care how you misspell my name? No, just do it so I can get my thing faster. God. The only thing about it is I try to use, I started with Chris because it wasn't, I don't know that many Chris's, but then I realized Chris is pretty popular too. I just hate going yeah. somewhere and I, I know I'm not the only, like the chances of me walking in somewhere and being the only Mike is amazing and I don't care where I go because Mike's just that popular of a name. So I don't want to have to be like, oh, Mike C or Mike CR because you could yeah. have, you know what I'm saying? Like that shit gets born. Then there's CR. I'm like, yo, fuck that. <laughs> Take like my phone number or some shit. Like I'm about to go with Mike CRA. Like that just doesn't come off, right? dude. What? That's weird. You know like, what? You might just take my whole last name at that point. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> well, that's what you could. You have two options. That you could just say Crawford. Like that's your first name. I never thought about that. Or that's, that's some dumb shit, right? <laughs> or well, like mine's McCorkle. It doesn't work. But Crawford, like that could be a first name. Yeah. I can't be like McCorkle, and they're like, fucking, I, I thought Brendan was hard. All right. <laughs> Let me try and guess this fucking banana. <laughs> or the other thing you could do, which everybody should do, is you didn't get to name yourself as a child. What would you have named yourself? Pick a name and use that as your alias. You're not going to change Yo, your name on your birth certificate. Go be. If I use that as my alias, it makes it harder because the name I actually like that I'm probably never going to get to use because I don't have kids, don't know if I'm going to have any. And if I have a son, the first one's going to be a junior. So I would have to have two male sons. Jordan. And I'm almost 40. So. Jordan? I doubt it. No, Isaiah. I love the name Isaiah, even though it's like three syllables, though. Like, that's too much to give for a pickup order, bro. Like, that's three syllables. Like, I'm good. I'm not going that far for a makeup day. Like, why don't you no. just go? Okay, so then if if you eventually were to have kids and have two boys, that's why you don't want to use Isaiah. Why couldn't you just be like Izzy? Nobody's go gonna Izzy. say Izzy. You get it's an own little click to your head and a little homage to yourself. And fuck the person taking your order. Just go with Izzy, baby. Hey. Man, that's got some fucking style, some flair to it. <laughs> hey, is it, that's right. the one where people are like, Izzy, your order's ready. And they're like, oh, shit, fucking Izzy, here you go. Yeah, that was a good oh, one. I might, I might take that. I might use that. Free for it. <laughs> Anything heard on this is free for anybody. Now yeah. you're going to go in somewhere and somebody's going to order something as Izzy, and you're going to get triggered. You're going to be like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? I'm Izzy. I don't even know if I want to be Izzy. Don't be Izzy. Yeah. <laughs> if I hear somebody ordering Izzy, I'm going to fuck it. I'm going to call you like on site. <laughs> I'm going to call you on site like, yo, this shit is weird. <laughs> uh, two Izzy's don't make a right. Two Izzy's don't make a mic. Oh. Hey, how Ooh, about my. that? All right, what are you watching? You watch anything? How's Manifest treating you? Uh, it's almost over. I'm on season three now. And then I'm watching um, Raising Canaan. Started yesterday, so. Is that, okay, I want to ask you that. Is that a new series, or is it like the third chapter in a series? It's a new series, but it's a chapter, but it's before. So it's it's a new series starting with the prequel. Yes. Okay, That because I didn't want to jump. I wanted to watch it. I was, like, super intrigued. I'm like, fuck, I don't have stars. I got to download stars. But I was super intrigued, but it said like chapter three or something. So I was like, wait a second. Did I miss something? Because I've never seen anything about this before. So I just want to make sure. But if you're telling me this is the green light number one episode, I'm in. Yeah, it's the green light number one episode yesterday. And it's for, so they're doing, so they've done two chapters already. But this is actually going to be before. So you actually... I don't know how much they're going to go back and forth. So that's my thing. You know how shows do that. But yeah. you actually technically shouldn't need to know anything 
from what you've already seen because all this is going to be before that, before everything we've yeah, already seen. Unless, unless they do flash forwards. Yeah, unless they do flash forwards. But here's the, here's the other thing, is since there were two previous chapters, which is what I was asking, so I'll go back to the chapter one and start from there. Because the other thing is, like, with... I ask people, because I never watch the Star Wars movies. Like, I've seen a couple. I've seen them put together, yeah. but never sat down and watched a movie front to back, except for Attack of the Clones, because I saw it in the theater. But... Like, I asked Star Wars fans, and I've gotten two reactions. Like, hey, if I was going to watch them all, do you watch them in the order they came out, were released? Or do you watch them in order of timeline, like chronologically? Start with episode one. And I got both different responses. So, in something like this, Raising Kanan, I would want to go back to chapter one, because it would make me feel like that's the way it was intended. That's the way they wrote it, was to watch it in the order they released it. So in respect of that process, I'm going to go back. But now I know what to look for, I'm going to go back and watch it because it looks really yeah. fucking good. Yeah, well, it's from Power, though. So it's not like it was Raising, Raising Canning Chapter 1. No, no Power I know. was Chapter 1. Oh, okay. No, I understand. I'm, I understand. I'm saying the, the show looks awesome. I would like to watch the whole series. Yeah, but like you just explained it, I don't think it was done that way. I think this actually was re- written as a way to keep the show going. So I literally it. believe it was written after. The, after, the, I believe it was written in this way. Like one Got was it. written, two was written, and three was written. I don't believe it was written. They wrote one pieces. and were like, hey, this is awesome. People like it. Let's write another one. They go, shit, people still like it. We got to write another one. How do we do this? Oh, let's go back it's in time. Cent, right? So yeah. he's been doing so many shows and they probably were like, yo, like power was good, and then two is kind of. I mean, the book of is kind of like about his son, and they're like, "Yo, but Kanan died on season one, and he was like, that was hey! Fifty Cent's character." <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> spoiler alert. That's okay. <laughs> we need to think of something else for spoiler alert. By the way, can we fucking get updated? Can we just be like, I don't know. We got to think of something. Let that be your homework for the week. Think of something besides spoiler alert. There you go. Oh. All right. So that's so you saw the first episode? No, I haven't watched it yet, but okay. I, I started it. I just, I, well, I haven't finished it. I started it. And I'll be watching Selling Sunset. You know what? You have you watched Selling Sunset? Yo, those are fucking big ass houses, bro. I can't watch any of those shows. It just bothers <laughs> me. The people bother me so a, much. It motivates me. It motivates me to want my little house. All right, well, watch it on mute or something. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You watch it however you want. It's just the people bother me so much, and the fact that that show should be five minutes on YouTube. I, you know, I'm like, Ugh. it's just there's so much crowbarring in of just garbage <laughs> that it's it feels like a waste of time to where the payoff, the juice isn't worth the squeeze for me. But if yeah, it is yeah. for you, to each his own. I don't, I don't watch it that often. <laughs> it ain't really worth the squeeze. I just, every now and then yeah. I watch it. No, I got, dude, uh, like, if like an uh, American Chopper comes on, like, and I hadn't seen something in a decade, I'm like, hey, I'll watch this for a little bit. You know, like, I have those shows too where I'm like, I have no conceivably good reason to watch this garbage, but hey, I kind of like it. And then I watch like one and a half. I'm like, yep, that's why I don't watch this. <laughs> and then I watch something else. <laughs> like fucking Sesame Street. By the way, so Sesame Street's on HBO Max. Amazing. They have all the episodes ever. 50 years of Sesame Street. It's fantastic. What is not fantastic, can you believe that they have a skip intro option for Sesame Street? It's probably just built in for everything. I know it is, but they should take it out of the system for Sesame Street. That's what Sesame Street was founded on. Yeah, but some people don't want to watch the intro. Those, come on. Sunny days, chasing the clouds away. Who doesn't want that to start their morning? Somebody. They should just put that Sesame Street intro before most television shows. Just to get you happy. <laughs> and right before a comedy... Ooh, ooh, just let it go. Fuck it. <laughs> Sesame Street, man. I don't know. I'm like, that just, it seemed, it seemed a little out of whack for me. And I know it's just built into the machine, but I can still not like it. it seems like an egregious thing to me. I don't know. I've been watching uh, Somos, which is on Netflix. 
I finished Lupin, which was in French, and so I think it just recommended another uh, alternative English-speaking show. So this one's in Spanish. It's about uh, like a decade ago when the cartel took over a city in Mexico and just like decimated it just to show that they could do whatever they wanted and like nothing would live there. So it's kind of a dramatization of like based on a true story. It's but it's in Spanish, but it's it's excellent. I'm only a couple episodes in. And the fact that it's based on true events, like that always sucks me in, you know? That always interests me a little bit because I'm like, okay, even if they went really far off the rails, this is kind of based in truth. So we'll see how close they can get and kind of see what these people were going through. So it's a rough story, but really, really good. And then I also started watching uh, on a friend's recommendation, Physical, which is on Apple TV. It's about like this uh, 80s housewife or whatever that gets into aerobics and like her inner monologue on just being like a piece of shit and like, you know, like, oh, it's kind of, it's very interesting. It's more of a self-character study show, but it's it's actually really good. I didn't. That sounds deep. It's not really, that but it's real deep. it's a comedy. Believe it or not, so it's just a very dark comedy, which is right up my alley. So that I do recommend. And then, uh, well, Space Jam Two came out, Mike. Yeah, I know. I heard. I saw most of it. I mean, I'm not supposed to watch it, right? I don't have kids. It's a kid movie. I don't have kids, so I'm not yeah. supposed to see it, right? Well, I thought yeah, that so. was hilarious. It's like, I, you know, I was talking to my mother in law on Friday when it came out or whatever. I was like, yeah, you know, Space Jam 2 comes out, so that'll be good for the kids. And she's like, oh, I heard it was just getting trashed. I'm like, yeah, by adults. Ask some kids. <laughs> Fucking, yeah, adults are not going to like it all that much, and they're going to compare it to the old one. But, like, fucking. I remember when Space Jam 1 came out, adults did not want to see that. They're like, I don't want to take my kids to this fucking kids movie. And then eventually it's one of those things where adults saw it later on. Like, oh, this isn't so bad. This is a kids movie I can sit through. So that's what Space Jam 2 is supposed to be. A kids movie you can sit through. The fact that it's getting trashed by, it's like, okay. I'm on my like Instagram or whatever, and I'm reading reviews and stuff, and I'm just like, people trash it, and I'm just like, bro, I know you. You don't have any kids. Why were you watching it? Yeah. You just <laughs> so you were at home Friday night and decided you were just going to throw Space Jam onto your HBO Max and expected something that was going to hold your attention. Uh, it's a kids movie with Bugs Bunny and Lola. Yep. Like, bro, chill. Like, what were y'all? I don't get people, man. You want this animated Bugs Bunny and Lola were for us when we were kids. We are no longer kids, so now it's for our kids. Yep. You know why Bugs Bunny and Lola look the same? They don't have a beard now. They don't have gray hair now. You know why? Because they are cartoons. They stay the same age all this time. Because right. it's for the kids again. Fools. Sorry. Yep, that's how it is. I will say <laughs> that there were a couple of things that kind of stood out to me. Like the animation was different, which I'm sure it was a conscious decision to be like, this has to be a completely different movie, even though it's, you know, the sequel to it. So I'm like, all right, on that front. But the Bugs Bunny voice did not sound like a regular Bugs Bunny. It really, <laughs> really threw me off, considering he's like the second main character. It was just. Why you say that? You say he sounded like like a fake animated, like no, it like just too animated. No, it just didn't sound like, but it sounded like somebody doing a Bugs impersonation, which I'm sure they got it. You know, they've had hundreds and thousands of voices for Bugs Bunny, but so who who was Don Cheeto in the movie? He was like the bad guy. Yeah, he was the bad guy. Oh, okay. I thought he was. I thought I was about to say like, was he Bugs Bunny? Which he did an amazing too? job. John T. John I mean, he, the man. He always does. He always does amazing job. That's Which like, was funny because I was watching favorite. it, going like, "That's how you could tell he's a fantastic actor." Is because when he is around all this CGI cartoon shit, you can't tell. But when LeBron is, it is fucking ever clear that he is way <laughs> out of his element. Because I see, I saw him in like Trainwrecked, the Amy Schumer movie with Bill Hader, and he was just him played himself in the movie. He did a pretty good job. He's a decent actor, but when he was all in the CGI, you could 100% see that he was uncomfortable, but for Don Cheadle, he may as well be surrounded by, like, his Ocean's Eleven crew. Like, he was just <laughs> fucking in, zoned in, cool as a cucumber, you believed it, and you're like, 
can't, how does he see all this shit? Like, he's he's just a man. I love Don Cheadle. Love him. Yeah, me too. Love him too. Definitely. But With you I do have to say, you know, overall, at the end of the day, Space Jam 2 is better as a movie. Space Jam 2 is better. If we weren't doing a podcast together, I would have clicked. But I, like, I would have clicked out of but this and left. There's, I, there's a reason. And it's because this Space Jam brought a title to the Los Angeles Lakers. And the original Space Jam was just a movie. This ain't bring no title to... Oh, in the movie it brought a title to... Oh, I... Anthony Davis is in Space Jam 2, and he has the most significant part of the Toon Squad outside of LeBron James. And <laughs> that's why Space Jam 2 <laughs> is better. And that's why he went to the Lakers, because they were like, yo, 100%. we can give you a max, but we're going to throw you this extra bread for you being in Space Jam 2. You don't think that was a part of the deal LeBron with LeBron? you up for that, yeah. Yeah, LeBron cool. goes, hey, I'll... I'll give you something that no other franchise can. I'll immortalize you in a Space Jam movie. Boom. Done. Thank you for the title. (laughs) In that aspect, I can't be mad at you as a Lakers fan. Yeah. But I still like the first one better as a movie. (laughs) It's hard to beat the original. You really got to be better if you're going to be better than the original because they get the benefit of the doubt every time. The only thing that I've... The only sequel that I thought was better than the original was... Bad Boys. I think... But no, Born Ultimatum was better than regular the Jason Bourne. Like the original. Oh, I got lost in those. I can't. No. I fell asleep I the first, in like the Supremacy. I saw a couple, one. but I'm, I, I, I love Born Ultimatum. But then it got worse after that. Like it was good. Okay, 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 really good. And then okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right on all those Borns. I'm good with all that shit. What? Anyway, what we will be listening to this week, Spotify playlist, Bobby Brown and Iggy Pop. Iggy Pop. That's right. (laughs) I love Iggy Pop. Very underrated as a classic (laughs) rocker. And on that note, we'll get you out of here with the knowledge drop of the week. If a liquid or lotion says that it exfoliates, that just means that it has tiny rocks in it. And, um... If you're the smartest person in the room, get you another room. Hey. Yeah, have a good weekend. All right. On that note, love y'all. Take it easy.